Hey everyone, welcome to my show Friday PM. Uh, I'm very happy to be here at Calabash Cigar. Uh, we're in South Portland. This is a really interesting place and I have a very interesting <laughs> guest as well. Uh, so you're a gentleman, you're by the name, you go by the name of Trig. Trig. Right? Trig. It's uh, short for Trigva. Okay. Trigva is a Norwegian name. Norwegian, yeah, okay. Family. Father and father both Norwegian. Norwegian. Born and raised there. Born and raised in Norway. Yeah. And so uh, you were born in the U.S.? Uh, yeah, I was born yeah. In, in Baltimore. Baltimore, Maryland? South, South. Okay. <laughs> uh, and so I, I know you have a very interesting life story. So I thought it would be kind of interesting to start kind of way back at the beginnings. Um, you were born in Baltimore, a big, big city kind of life in those days? Or? No, I, I was, um, I left there a very early age. My father was a Coast Guard man. We moved every three or four years. We, I was someplace else. Yeah. New London, Connecticut, and then South Portland, Maine, and Staten Island, New York. and so. As a, as a youth, I, I, I spent a lot of time here in Maine. What was Baltimore and Philadelphia like in those days? Was it as kind of bustling as it is now, a little bit? Uh, well, I, I, my first big job uh, as, out of high school was with Curtis Publishing Company. Okay. And they, they, Ladies Home Journal, Saturday Evening Post, right, right, right. Country Gentleman, I was office boy there, and then went into the service about when I was about 18. So. so you were working before you went into the service for public, and it was all, it was all a lot of magazines? Yeah. Yep. Yes. And so you went into the service. My grandfather was in World War II. He was oh, really? training, he's passed away, but he was training to be a, a, a gunner for one of the, the planes that dropped the bombs in Hiroshima. Trained the whole time in California, yeah. and uh, his team didn't get picked. They all drew straws, and he got sent home, and that was his career in World War II. Oh. I was in a, uh, a navigator in B-24s. Okay, right, right, and similar. During so, the war. And were you also, as he was in the Air Force then? Na Navy Air Force. Navy yes. Air Force, okay. Most of, uh, most of my tour was in the South Pacific. South Pacific. Went all those little, little islands. Yep. We, we flew patrol, in fact, we were on a patrol for um, the, when they went into Iwo Jima and those islands. We just flew cover for the massive amount of ships. That, that the ships went, went. They were just flying to see if any anybody flying around that shouldn't be. And was this uh, the time of kamikazes and things like that? Was that something to be worried about? No, no, no we were, they weren't doing were, that. There were very few around right. at that point. They the kamikazes went after the sh battleships. And, the battleships, yeah, okay. They didn't, bother a little plane flying around. Right. We, we, we tried to, uh, any shipping and so forth around the islands that shouldn't be there, we take care of them. Okay. And <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, and so how many years uh, were you uh, kind of stationed there for the duration of the war? Uh, well, that lasted about a year and a half. Okay. And then I came back to the, back to the States and flew. Yep. Yeah. So the war ended, and you came back to the states, or, or you fi you finished your time before the war ended. Well, I flew for a while with uh, NAT, uh, Naval Air Transport Service, and then we, uh, during that period, we were flying some of the, between the islands, picking up wounded and taking them to various hospitals and around. Okay. Okay. And so, uh, you know, you, you probably 18, 19, 20, the war ends. You came back to Baltimore after that? or No. No, no I, I went back to uh, Pennsylvania. I uh, finished high school in a remote, uh, in, uh, suburban Pennsylvania, suburban Philadelphia. Sure, okay. And, and I went back to there and stayed there a while and then used my GI Bill to go to dramatic school and so forth. Correct. So this is what's kind of an interesting, I think, to the audience as well. So that, I mean, this is kind of a, a time that was, I think there was a lot of kind of famous actors around that same generation that kind of got out of the military and went to, to drama school. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and that's what you had, you did as well. Uh, yeah, I yeah. went to dramatic school and uh, met uh, a kid by the name of Paul Newman. A little kid by the name of Paul we, Newman. We did yeah. some shows together. Yeah. And, 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 and uh, we took, in other words, like a, a summer stock where we did 
did did a, did a show a week. Every show, every week, we did a different show. Okay. So sometimes we were on the same show together, and sometimes not. How long were you living in Philadelphia around in those days? Is that when you were doing some acting in Philadelphia? Only on small theaters, you know, uh, lo local theaters. And so okay. Forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did that. And, and, and then, uh, yeah. but after uh, this. Uh, and after I left Massachusetts, I came back to Philadelphia, went into a TV station to see if they had any acting jobs, because they didn't have any, but they did need some cameramen. Okay. I became a cameraman. Cameraman, <laughs> right. So you switched from in front of the camera to behind the camera. Oh, right. And, and this would have been in a, or like the 50s by now? or Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Early. Early late, 50s. Late, late 40s. Late 40s. Late 40s. Uh, and, yeah, that's right. And I uh, became a cameraman there. I met um, a guy by the name of Kovacs. Yeah. And uh, I, it was easy to get him right in front. So I got in touch with, played some of the bit parts with him on his show. And as, as part of the whole thing, right. everybody could get into the act. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, so in those days, uh, for the audience, they'd like to always know, like, how how was television made in those days? I mean, it's obviously different, and you were, was there video in the same way that they have video now? Were you filming a lot more on film almost, or? No, it was all live. Live, was, yeah. There was no no way to record anything. You couldn't even record it. They never, everything was live. What you did, you did. And yeah, you, you, you right. can't do it again. We can't do it again. It was literally <laughs> no. like an early type of radio and it just it when it went out there, beamed out through that frequency. That was all they had. That was right. You, it, whatever you did was was there. Yeah. It makes it more immediate, maybe more uh, nerve wracking in some ways. But well, you got to watch what you're saying here. Right. 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 Yeah. Your language has to be pure. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, for the audience that's a lot younger, like you worked with Ernie Kovacs, is that correct? Right. And who was Ernie Kovacs? Can you tell everybody a little bit about who he was? Because I think he, he, he passed was, away pretty long he ago. He came from a, a small radio station in Trenton. Yeah. And uh, uh, he was hired there to do some shows at WPTZ in, in Philadelphia. Yeah. And uh, uh, he had several things. Right. Various types of. Right. He was good. And so he was a, a comic, kind of, I think. Was he kind very, of. Very, very comic. I, I read, because again, this was kind of before my time, I, but I had read his Wikipedia, learned a little bit about him, and that he was a big influence on a lot of Johnny Carson, a lot of other uh, stand up uh, yeah. type of talk shows. He, he, he was an innovator on quite a few things. I've seen some things now that are being done that he did early on. Way back before. Yeah. Because he, after he left Philadelphia, he went to um, CBS in New York. New York. And I, I went with him to CBS in New York. Okay. I was in there for about oh, almost two years. Did he interview uh, celebrities too? Very seldom. Yeah. No. So was yeah. it mostly just him doing a lot of his show he, himself? And he, had, uh, he had a singer with him called Edie Adams. Okay. Who he, eventually married he married her yeah. okay yeah yeah and her yeah. name was Edie Edie Adams, Edie Adams. Yeah. and so you you worked with uh, Ernie for some of the times in the 50s and yeah, didn't he have a early unfortunate accident with a car or something after uh, that was after you we had, a, we had a run on CBS yep and he then went out to Hollywood to do, do some shows yeah. And that's when he, he uh, evidently drove his car uh, around one of those winding roads. Have you ever been to L L.A.? I used to live the there, yeah. The, road, right, yeah. the Mulholland Very Hills heavy. and everything, yeah. He, I know, he, he, I know it, he wasn't drunk. He never, he never drank. Wasn't drinking? No. Just never maybe did. speeding or... He might have had a cocktail, but he, he wasn't a drinker. So I think he just lost control. He, he probably was lighting his cigar or right. something like that. Right. And you lost control. Doesn't it seem like that was a lot of people in Hollywood were, because uh, James Dean, I think, had a car crash. Yeah. It kind of happens a lot. It's definitely a very interesting town for very bad roads and a lot of, you know, yeah, exciting things yeah. to do in between. 
Uh, it seems like every couple of years you hear of a celebrity that has an unfortunate automobile accident. Well, I was, uh, I didn't go with them to California. There was nothing for me to do. I, so right. I was kind of floating around there in New York. Yeah. And um, I started, um, I even worked backstage on a few Broadway shows okay. and, as a stagehand. Yeah, yeah, That yeah. sort of thing. Uh, but then I, I went back and I, I met uh, a, a lady who was uh, secretary to J.P. Miller. Okay. Who wrote Days of Wine and Roses. I do know and that, yeah. She wanted to go out to California to, to work with him, and I drove her and her whole family out to California work there for a while. And the Days of Wine and Roses, that was with Jack Lemon, as far as I remember. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it, was uh, great, it was a great show. Yeah, it was a great one. And so, you, were you in New York for a long stretch of time after that, or? Uh, I stayed in California, but I didn't stay there too long. Because you didn't I, stay. I had nothing to do. went back. Yeah. And I, and then uh, I'm trying to get the time frame in there right. if I can. Um, but it was it was kind of a touch and go time for me. Okay. I was not out of work, but I wasn't into anything good. Exactly. I, I was never yeah. unemployed. But yeah. I could always grab a show on 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 Broadway. Just walk in and see if they need someone to move a chair from one move place to the next. Move a chair, right? <laughs> exactly. Right. No, I mean that's and. It, and you're still a pretty young guy, enjoying yourself. Had you been married at that time when you st uh, working a lot of those plays? Or let's see, yes. yes yeah. Okay. Married. Yeah. And so, uh, does your wife still with us nowadays? Or? No. 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 She uh, she passed away only about two years ago. Two years ago. But, but uh, we were divorced. From long that. ago. Long ago. A different I time. I was with somebody else by then. Right, exactly. Well, so for the audience, uh, I mean, you, it's pretty exciting. Are, are you lived a, a long life. Did you want to tell everybody how old that you are? How old I am now? Yes. I'm, uh, I'll be 101 101. In two months. That is Maybe exciting. Maybe time Congratulations. This, I'll be Probably close to then, although there's a quick <laughs> turnaround time on the show. Uh, so uh, there's not that many centenarians around. Isn't that what you call a centenarian? Well, I know. Yeah. Right. Even in Maine, I think there's no. probably, I mean, there's there's some. Is there a club or anything or? No. No, it's, we don't. Totally don't do that together. kind of thing. Yeah, but <laughs> you look great for a hundred and almost a hundred and one. Um, so, we're we're in New York, and that's uh, that's where you kind of were for a longer period of time. Was that a, a period of time in your life that yes, was? Yes, and, and uh, I I latched on to. Um, well, I can go back to Philadelphia then. Yeah. I'm going back to Philadelphia where I, I, I got involved with teleprompter, running prompting shows on, on local ch channel CBS in, in uh, Philadelphia. Okay. And uh, then uh, I, I traveled with teleprompter, did some uh, local, uh, I did some. Um, shows with, uh, I mean, I ran the teleprompter for some, for Adlai Stevenson, who ran for president. Yeah. I've traveled with him while he was on his campaign. Right. That was quite interesting. Yes. Yeah. And Adlai Stevenson, and that would have been probably 60s kind of time we're talking yeah, about? Yeah, he ran, he ran yeah. against uh, a, a guy named Eisenhower. He was against Eisenhower, okay. <laughs> and you were the, t so when you talk about the teleprompter, you're, you were on the early days of the teleprompter and when politicians were on there. And oh, yeah. They, so, yeah. Yeah. They, was, and, everything I did was early. It definitely <laughs> sounds it. But, I mean, even tele, the television was kind of in its infantry. That would have been yeah. in those days. And so, but with the teleprompter, you were working on, on those where you were helping to type in the, the, the uh, gentleman's yeah, you political type, speeches. You just hand me the script. I'd type it up on, be on a long roll of paper. and. Uh, yeah. Very complicated, but it's right. It, it was a it was a good job to do. It right, very right. Interesting. And it, but this is also like what they still have till this day for most politicians that they're they still on the have it. They teleprompters. Still have teleprompters. They don't. Well, they're not all teleprompters. There, there are several 
companies that uh, have gotten right. into it. Right, right, right. But everything is called teleprompter. Right, it becomes. They were the yeah. original ones. It's almost like when you hear of Q-tips or you hear of Kleenex, it's a brand, but it's such a dominant brand right. that that's right. all you think right. of. So teleprompter is a company, you work for them specifically like Xerox or, you know, type of company, yeah. and they were the only game in town for teleprompters. Yes. But now that same type of thing. That's yeah. right. And so had you, after your early times in acting, had you gone back to acting after that, or that was kind of the, the most that you were involved in the acting no, side of things? No, I or? didn't do any more. Um, Got behind the scenes I more. I was always behind the scenes. Right. I worked prompters for Carson, Johnny Carson, and right. Jack Parr. Yeah. Or Merv Griffin. Merv and Griffin. Sort of thing. Yeah, so you... You probably have some fun stories of all of these folks, that, and well, they all we, came and went. <laughs> That's <laughs> I behaved myself and kept, yeah. kept out of the way, just right, right. did what I, I had to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You weren't going to all the Malibu parties or things like that. No, and those days. no. Because that, you were working for them. Um, so uh, that kind of gets us up to when you got involved in early uh, cable television. I mean, I know that that's, that's what we're on now is cable right. TV. Yeah, and, and I was, yeah, I was involved in the early because I, as I was working at Teleprompter, they were starting the cables. They were one of the originators with the running the cables. Okay. And yeah, yeah. we would. Um, I was working a couple of shows, and someone at the office said, "Hey, would you like to run a studio? We're setting up a studio uptown." Yeah. Are well, you sure? Okay. <laughs> All right. 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 So they was they were. They were in a high-rise building up at the end of Manhattan, up on the 15th floor. They rented an apartment and s started setting up the equipment so they could microwave up to the next building and send, send the signal over. It was one way of running cable right. by microwave in the um, beginning. Really? It wasn't really cable then. So it was like through, still like a microwave, so it was still like a being beamed around almost, like satellite type of thing? Kind no, of hard to say. No. Like the, mi the microwave was just a big dish yeah. on the top of the building and we'd say, I don't know how they did it. I was how they beamed it, yeah. I was not in the technical end of anything like right, that. Right, so right, right. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. But they did but it. They started uh, uh, the system of running cable Instead of broadcasting, we would cable cast everything. Okay. Because we come over the wire, and not o not through the air. Okay, and that started because it does seem as though that probably like a lot of technology started in New York a lot of the time. Right. Where where and it, and it was this a kind of like a cable closed circuit type of thing where it went out at first to New York before they went to everywhere else in the U.S. Right. Yeah. Yes kind of beta testing it there. And you were working on it and, and, and doing stuff with the cable stations there early yes, on. Yes, And how, what, at what year did that start expanding out oh, that you started that seeing? Oh, that would have been, uh, you got me there. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's probably like a 60s, 70s, 70s yeah, yeah. in there. HBO, you know, they're still around, they're giant. They were kind of one of the earlier folks putting movies out there on cable. Right. There's a lot of very new technology. I'm not a tech guy either, but I know that it was, uh, when I was a kid, it, we still didn't have small towns in Maine. We didn't have cable. It was, it didn't get to even in a lot of parts of Maine. But so you were in New York all through till the 80s or so, or? Up until, uh, yeah, I, I, I retired from the cable system uh, in 82, 82, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I came up to Maine to retire. Yep, to retire. right, why not? Yeah. So you got to uh, Maine in 1982. Where, where did you move to in Maine? Like what uh, part, Portland? Yes. Yeah, yes. okay. Yes. I moved to, ended up in Saco. Saco, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so do you still live in Saco to, to this day or? Uh, at the present time, I'm in a retirement home. Yeah, in more in Portland area. Yes. Yeah. Up in Portland. Yep. Uh, uh, before we get going, did you have a, a great, interesting story of back in the day to regale us with? Uh, anything uh, would be fun. Well, um, in, 
interesting story. You uh, caught me there. Yeah. The whole, the whole life was interesting. I right, remember, right. I, I, I'd like to go through it again. Right, exactly. Go uh, through and see it all I've again. Met so many people. Uh, hobnailed with it, with com uh, incoming presidents. And, uh, yeah. JFK. I, mean, I, I worked prompters for him one day. Yeah. Um, although I didn't work it for him because he had his script already, and then he uh, he waved it to me. I was sitting down in, 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 in the front of the stage. He just goes like this. He's gonna eat, so he started to ad lib. I just had to sit there. He, wow. He ad yeah. lib. He said he's always gonna use the prompter. Right. Right. Way. So he was kind of like uh, how Trump was always saying he doesn't use the teleprompter, and he'd he kind of go off script all over the place. Yeah, he but, didn't need it really. Yeah. Right. So that was JFK, and so uh, and you, if you would have been probably a pretty young guy in those days, somewhat, and oh, working yeah, with yeah. him, yeah, and then. Or even in his thirties. Thirties. Yeah. And, yeah. and was yeah. that a, a long ways before he got assassinated, or around the same like? Oh yeah, he was, he was running for president. He was running. He was running. Running for president. And then, and then he, he made it only, through. I, he was just a senator. Yeah. He ran for president. Okay. And yeah. so, you, do, do you feel that you worked a lot more with politicians after the time that you? No, were, that, not too many. That, I, that was only that, uh, that. That was the early '50s when uh, the, that I was working that venue of uh, prompting. Yeah. And uh, as I say, it was with. Uh, Ran uh, around the country with Adlai Stevenson. Right, right. So, it was it wasn't, was Adlai Stevenson the guy who was anti-war or what was? I feel I like don't I remember. Know what the yeah, what was his? About. Right, he I was kind of lost in the shuffle. It up, right, I didn't bother reading it. Right, right. <laughs> well, but that was that in those days when you because you had to go from stop to stop because you were the teleprompter guy. Yeah, yeah good, so, different. Yeah, different assignments. Was that an interesting life being on the road with these guys? And, oh, sure. Yeah, staying yeah. at different hotels and get free lodging and uh, meet. Right, and the big cities a lot of times because that's where they want to speak at. Right. Sometimes smaller towns too. Um, were there any cities that you really enjoyed when you were doing all that traveling, like more than others? Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. I lived there. It's nice. That and was it, a, it was yeah. a great. Great, great city to visit. And before we sign off, uh, the election here is coming up. Are you excited about that? <laughs> sure. Yeah. If I can get to vote, I'll vote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you don't want to know who for, though. I, I mean, it I think it's, it's all kind of uh, been a wild time. I mean, I think politics has gotten so zany that you must have seen that. I mean, one other thing that I could ask you about was being early on in cable. Have you noticed that the the kind of the rise of cable TV in both of our lifetimes has really changed politics a lot. I don't know if it's for the better, but it's turned it well, more into getting TV ratings, being yeah, all about the, yeah. what's going to be the biggest exciting thing on TV. It's uh, cable just does seem to always need to have the fresh new thing to talk about, and it doesn't blend as well with politics. I don't understand. When I first got into, into TV, they were three channels to watch. Right, exactly. <laughs> Even when I was and a kid. You yeah. had ABC, CBS, and, and NBC. And they could that get PBS it. here and there. That right? was it. Yep. You had three anchors, and you kind of really felt like you could respond to who those three anchors on the news were. You, you had a favorite, like Chet Huntley or right. Cronkite. Walter Cronkite. Right. That, that type. But yep. I worked with Walter Cronkite. Walter Cronkite, sometimes. yeah. He was a great guy to work for. And, um, yeah, it, it's so different. And right. It's hard to compare what's going on now. It is. It's and, and the technology's gotten so. Uh, they do things now that they wouldn't even dream of doing right. back in the fifties. Well, I appreciate your time. I don't want to take up too much of it. I know that you're having That's a. It's okay. I yeah. go back to my pipe. Pipe and exactly <laughs> having the card game and everything else. Yes. Thank you so much for your time, oh, Craig. It was great talking to you. Yeah. Thank you very much for tuning in. Have a good night. Take care. Bye bye.